So we're going to set up the Gantt chart on a new tab called Gantt chart. And in there we want to put our tasks. So we're going to list our tasks there. Uh, some notes about the tasks. This will be particularly useful when it comes to the rationale. So we can just write down here why we put a task in that order or what the task is about. We want to know the staff assigned and we want to know the total hours assigned to that task. Across here we need the number of days. So what we do is we're going to put some numbers in there. Okay, so that's a week, that's going to be week one. And our project can last for 17 weeks. So if we select that, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this all the way across here for 17 weeks, which was about 119 days. Should be around about there. Yep, 120. And then across the top there, we can just have each week so we can see where 17 weeks is. So basically, just put week one in there, format cells, merge the cells, and then we can see where week one is. Great, so now you can see that I've highlighted the weeks like that, so we can see each week going across the top there, up to week 17. So as you can see, it's 119 days in total. Now let's resume. The project starts on a Monday. So we'll list all the days of the week in there. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if we highlight all of those, we can basically then click on the little square at the bottom there and drag all of that across and it should repeat our days of the week. Another little trick I'm going to show you is how to freeze the panes. So if we click on this cell here, so where it says Monday and row five there, and then we click on view and then just click freeze panes. Okay, so basically what that does is then if you scroll across there, we can see all the days and we can still see this section of the screen there. And also we can scroll up and we still see all of this information here. Okay, so I'm just going to show you another little Excel trick where we're going to create a drop down box for our tasks. So that means we don't have to copy and paste or type anything in there. So basically click on the cell underneath task, then click on the data tab in the menu and click on data validation there, select data validation. So this comes up, change this, allow to list, and then to select the source, we need to click that button there. Go to the project info summary and drag that down and select all of the tasks like that. Press enter to get that back and then just press OK. And this gives us a drop down box which is populated with all the tasks. Select that, click on the little box down there in the bottom right and drag that. Well, we don't, we don't, we don't need that many however many we might need. So we just drag that down there. We click on one of the, any one of those and we've got our little drop down box. We can do the same for staff. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that again. Click on data, data validation, change it to list, select the source, or select the staff members. Press enter, press okay, and we've got the staff in there. Again, we can just drag that down to where we might need it to be. And then calculating the total hours, it's quite easy. We just click on formulas, click on auto sum, and that's just going to be all of these. So we'll just drag that across there to the end of our project, which is there. And then just click on the tick. And again, drag that down to however many we might need. Okay, now we need to start populating this with some tasks. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the traditional software development lifecycle. So first of all, we have things like planning and analysis. Then we have the development of all the modules. Then we have testing. And then we have deployment and the user training on the end there. So if we just insert another column, so right click insert another column, and we're going to start off with our planning and analysis tasks. And that's going to include upgrading the infrastructure because that has to be done first. Okay. And that's also going to include creating the test plans, which we'll need for later. The next one we want to look at is module development. And for now, we're just going to put these in order. So from our little drop down box, we can select one, 
to then we want to do testing so each module needs to be unit tested so let's put unit testing in our notes section here we can put unit testing module one okay so basically each module needs to be tested in isolation so we need to have unit testing for each of these modules after unit testing we've got integration testing again that needs to be done for each module because we need to check that module one works with two three four five six module two works with all the modules okay so things like that so we need to do six of those okay so there we go i've added um some more notes to that so unit testing for each of the modules to test each module in isolation and then integration testing for each of the modules to ensure all modules work together then our next one will be fixing and regression testing for major faults now we're told in the set task brief that no more than three major faults will be found throughout the whole project. Now we need to do some math to work this out. Yeah, so here's the set task brief. So there we go. We're told no more than three major faults will be found throughout the whole project. And we also need to work out how long that's actually going to take. So if we look up here, fixing and regression for me, testing for major faults, 14 hours per fault found. So we need to do 14 times 3, so 14 times 3, uh, which will be 42. So in total, fixing and regression testing for major faults will take 42 hours. So let's just put that in there so we can say what, how we've worked. So that's 14 times 3 equals 42. Okay, we'll need that later on. The next one we're going to do is fixing and regression testing for the minor faults so this is little bugs in all of the modules so we're given some information about our minor faults so there we go at least three minor faults will be found with each module so we can copy that and we have got minor faults will be seven hours per fault found so we need to do seven times three which is 21 and then we need to multiply that by six okay because we've got six modules so this is minor faults in each of the modules so we do 7 times 3 which is 21 and then 21 times 6 which would be a total of 126 hours okay, so we're assuming it that a maximum of three faults or at least three faults per module will will be found so it takes seven hours to fix each of those faults so in total it's going to take 21 hours to fix minor faults with each module there are six modules so 21 times 6 which then gives us a total of 126 hours which is what it will take to complete this task. And then let's do user acceptance testing. There it is. This is about letting the end users test the system to ensure it meets the requirements. Then we want to do the deployment. This will be deploy modules. And then finally on the bottom there, we're going to do the user training. So you can see this is nicely formatted now, so we can read it all. We can get rid of that because we don't need that. And what we can also do is we can hide all of these rows if you wanted. So basically, if you just click on the bottom row, you highlight that. On the keyboard, press Control and Shift, and then the down arrow, and that will highlight all of the rows. You right click and you press Hide. Okay, so now we're just working with the cells. That we need to use okay so let's assign some staff members shall we the first one is pretty easy upgrade infrastructure there's only one person that can do that and that's marius so we'll put him in there and if we look at our project info summary again we can see that this takes 21 hours so he's going to start on day one and he's going to work seven hours a day remember so we put a seven in there seven in there and seven in there okay so we can see that that will take marius three days if you also remember on here there's a key and marius is purple so we get that and we color that in purple okay so we can see that marius is working for those three days uh, in my solution we're not having the physical server so we don't actually need that task so let's get rid of that and we're going to go straight into creating test plans and developing the module uh, so creating the test plans, we're going to assign Sarah to do that. That takes 
Okay, test plan, there we go. 14 hours, which is two days, so she can do that while Marius is doing that. Sarah's colour is red, so we colour that in red. First module we need to develop is our database because there are other things that are dependent on that. So, for example, the user interface that will need to interact with the database to display information, and also the information feed, which will get some information from the database at some point. So, let's develop our database. The only person we've got to develop a database is Gina, and this module is going to take her 147 hours. So, she's going to start it then. Now you might notice on here we've got Saturday and Sunday, okay? Remember from the set task brief that our staff are only working five days a week. So we'll get rid of that, they're not going to work weekends. So what we can do is basically we highlight those two columns, right click and hide that. So that's going to take her quite a while. Uh, Gina is blue, yes she is, there she is. So we'll colour that in, in blue. Now. We can't start module two yet because that's dependent on the database. So that can't start until Gina has finished. So that won't be able to start until then. Its earliest start time will be Tuesday on day 30. Okay, so remember unit testing cannot take place until after the module has been developed. So let's look at module one, which is up here. Okay, so that ends on day 29 down there. So Ahad cannot test this until day 30. So he's going to test it in there. Uh, so unit testing, 21 hours per module, which is three days. So it's going to take him three days to test module one. Module two is here, so that can't be tested until here. Now Terry's going to test unit module four. Now he can't do that while he's developing. So let's see when module four finishes. Not much of four finishes there. Let's go down to Terry. Uh, let's check Terry's not actually doing anything. Oh, he is there. Hopefully we can get our three days in there for testing. Uh, let's start it there. Okay, we'll start it there. We'll, we'll give our hard a bit of a bit of time to finish off because remember he's experienced anyway, so uh, he might need the full day to do that before testing starts. So, and that's reasonable reasonable assumption to make so we'll put that in there okay integration testing cannot take place until all the unit testing and development has been done uh, we're going to put terry on this okay so he's going to do all of the integration testing so we can't start integration testing until day 59 and integration testing is going to take 14 hours per module which is basically two days Fixing and regression testing for major faults, that's Sarah, that's going to take her 42 hours. Fixing and regression testing for minor faults, that's all the little bugs in the software, so we'll put our hat on that, because that'll be good for his experience. He can do that at the same time, so it's going to take him 126 hours. So he's going to do that per module, so I'm wondering if we can start him a little bit early, actually. So I'll say Terry's done his integration testing for module 1. In theory, our hat can start his mine fault testing here. So after Terry has in integrated module one, he's done all the testing for that, then Ahad can visit module one and check for bugs. User and acceptance testing, and we're putting Terry on that um, because he's the one with the communication skills and ability to explain things in uh, like user-friendly language, that sort of stuff. I think we need to deploy the modules before we can do the user acceptance testing. The reason for that is because the users are going to test the end system. So we need a system for them to test. We'll give that to Ahad again. That'd be good for his experience. So deploying the modules, seven per module. So that is seven times six, which is 42. So I'll just write that in there. So we're doing seven times six, which is 42. Okay, so it's seven hours per module there are six modules so 42 hours in total so let's do that here so he's done his fixing and regression testing for all the faults and then he's going to deploy the modules which takes him 42 hours there they are and after R has deployed all the modules then terry's going to come along and he's going to 
do the user acceptance testing. And then finally, user training again, for the same reason, we'll put Terry on. That, that takes 21 hours. Okay, and we've got quite a few days left over, so we fit it all in the time frame, and this will be good for contingency planning. So if a task runs over, we've got we've got that little bit of extra time to play with. We need to save this as a PDF. So what we need to do is click page layout, click orientation, press landscape, do margins as narrow, and then do file, save as sheets in PDF, Gantt chart. Fit to paper width, convert to PDF, it'll ask you to save it. And it should appear, there it is. And there we have a quick and easy complete Gantt chart.